Although tourniquets are the best option for life-threatening hemorrhage from the arms and legs, other methods to control blood loss should be used for other kinds of bleeding. For example, you should never use a tourniquet to treat bleeding from the head, neck, or torso. For these other bleeds, use one of the following methods. Apply pressure to pressure points along major blood vessels. Apply direct pressure to the site of the wound. Using pressure dressings on the wound. Using hemostatic agents on the wound to stop bleeding. Hemostatic agents should be the first line of treatment for life-threatening bleeds on the head, neck, or torso, followed by pressure dressings if hemostatic agents are not available. For less dangerous or non-life-threatening bleeding, applying direct pressure or applying pressure to pressure points is highly effective. One way to control bleeding on the limbs is to apply pressure to pressure points along major blood vessels. Remember, severe life-threatening bleeding should be treated with a tourniquet, but for non-life-threatening bleeding, applying pressure to pressure points can be very effective. To do this, apply pressure using your fingers, thumbs, the heel of your hand, or your knee to press down on a main artery supplying a wounded area with blood. This pressure may help shut off or slow down the flow of blood to the wound. To control bleeding in the lower part of the arm and elbow, apply pressure to the brachial artery. The brachial artery is the main source of blood for the lower arm. Its primary pressure point is located above the elbow, on the inside of the arm and the groove between the muscles. Using your fingers or thumb, apply pressure to the inside of the upper arm over the bone. To control bleeding of the thigh and lower leg, apply pressure to the femoral artery. The femoral artery is the main source of the blood to the thigh, leg, and foot, and its primary pressure point is located at the center of the front of the crease of the groin, where the groin meets the thigh. Use the heel of your hand or your knee to apply firm pressure to the front central point of the crease of the groin on the affected leg, targeting the femoral artery to press the artery against the bone. Lean forward to apply pressure. Most external hemorrhage can be controlled by applying direct pressure at the bleeding site, even carotid and femoral bleeding. If possible, apply pressure dressings to the wound first, then apply direct pressure. The pressure will help to compress the damaged blood vessels and control the bleeding. To apply direct pressure correctly, have the casualty lie on top of a flat, hard surface. Next, use both hands to push against the casualty's wound. Lean in to deliver direct pressure firmly to the wound. Maintain this pressure for 5 to 10 minutes. Never let up or remove your hands to check the wound. If you need to perform other procedures, a pressure dressing can be made using bandages and ace wrap. If the casualty is conscious, strong enough, and able to follow instructions, you can have them apply the direct pressure themselves. But make sure they are able to both apply enough pressure to the wound and maintain that pressure for at least 5 to 10 minutes. If direct pressure and a pressure dressing fail to control heavy bleeding on an extremity, that is, arm or leg, the next step is to use a tourniquet. Cautionary note, do not use direct pressure over a broken bone as this can make a wound worse. Use a pressure dressing to control non-life-threatening bleeding of the arms and legs and some life-threatening bleeding of the head, neck, and torso. Note that many commercial pressure dressings have their own instructions provided by the manufacturer. Follow those instructions when possible. Generally, to use a pressure dressing, remove the pressure dressing from its packaging. Position the sterile dressing pad over the wound. Wrap the bandage around the wounded limb or body part. Begin on the edge furthest from the torso if possible. Pull the bandage tightly and ensure that the sterile dressing pad is fully covered by the bandage. Ensure that the bandage is properly secured. If you need additional pressure, twist the portion of the bandage on top of the pad's location. Wrap around the body part, twist back, and finish wrapping the bandage. Never wrap pressure dressings around the neck. Instead, apply them to the injured side of the neck and sling the wrapping around the opposite underarm. If the bleeding continues, do not remove the first pressure dressing. Apply a second dressing over the first one. If the hemorrhage is non-life threatening, ensure that the pressure dressing does not impair circulation or nerve function, assuming they were not impaired before application. 
Loosen and re-secure the pressure dressing if necessary. Reassess the casualty to ensure that bleeding remains controlled. If you do not have a commercial pressure dressing available, you can use gauze or other dressing pads along with an elastic ace wrap or other bandaging material. If a wound to the arm or leg continues to bleed profusely, apply a tourniquet. Hemostatic agents are the first line of treatment for a life-threatening hemorrhage in a situation where a tourniquet cannot be used, such as a wound on the head, neck, or torso. Hemostatic agents can also be used if a pressure dressing is ineffective on its own. When applied to a wound, hemostatic gauze helps to develop a clot that stops the escape of blood. Hemostatic gauze will remain within the wound until removal by medical personnel. If using a commercial hemostatic agent, follow the instructions provided by the manufacturer. To use hemostatic gauze, expose the injury by removing or cutting away clothing. Wipe excess blood from the wound while preserving any clots that may have formed if possible. Locate the source of the most active bleeding. Next, remove the hemostatic gauze from its package and pack it tightly into the wound directly over the site of the most active bleeding. More than one roll of hemostatic gauze may be required to control the hemorrhage. Hemostatic gauze may be repacked or adjusted in the wound if needed to ensure proper placement. Next, quickly apply direct pressure to the wound with the hemostatic agent in place with enough force to stop the bleeding. Hold direct pressure for a minimum of three minutes. Reassess the wound to see if bleeding has been controlled. If needed, reinforce with another roll of hemostatic gauze and hold pressure. Leave the hemostatic gauze in place and secure it with a pressure dressing. Once applied, hemostatic gauze is not to be removed except by medical professionals. Continue applying and holding direct pressure until medical help arrives or bleeding stops. Note, if possible, keep the commercial hemostatic agent's packaging to be transported with the casualty so medical professionals are aware of any specific instructions.